Some will say that the story of Hodgkin lymphoma is a success story. Not only because of the phenomenal improvement in survival rates, but also due to our ever-growing understanding of this disease. It all began more than 180 years ago, when, in 1832, Thomas Hodgkin described the condition for the first time. He was intrigued by several cases of patients with massively enlarged lymph nodes. Towards the end of the century, Paul Ehrlich was trying to convince the world that living cells are directed by chemical signals and scientists might be able to control them. During his studies, he imagined an ideal therapy for any disease, the magic bullet, a drug precisely targeted at an invader. For a long time, researchers did not understand the real nature of Hodgkin lymphoma. Some took it for a strange type of tuberculosis. Others thought it might be a peculiar autoimmune disease or indeed a malignancy. In the beginning of the 20th century, the microscope allowed Dorothy Reed and Carl Sternberg to describe strange-looking large cells with two nucleoli. Named in their honor, the Reed-Sternberg cell became the iconic identifier of Hodgkin lymphoma. Amidst the Second World War, Louis Goodman and Alfred Gilman found a poisonous drug, nitrogen mustard. They went on to demonstrate that it was also effective in cancer patients, particularly those with malignant lymphoma. By turning a chemical weapon into an effective cytostatic drug, these early trials marked the advent of chemotherapy. Around the same time, the field of radiotherapy emerged. The use of linear accelerators outside physicists' labs was highly controversial, but radio-oncologists had their first tool, a high-energy knife to destroy cancer. In 1965, Lukes and Butler developed the Rye classification based on histological features and prognosis. They defined four subtypes. Lymphocyte-predominant Hodgkin lymphoma, nodular sclerosis, mixed cellularity, and the lymphocyte-depleted subtype. In 1979, Deal and his co-workers successfully established the first permanent Hodgkin lymphoma cell lines, giving scientists the opportunity to better understand the disease's nature and test drugs in vitro. The first international symposium on Hodgkin lymphoma was held in 1987. It was based on a long tradition of knowledge sharing and cooperation in this enthusiastic field. The technological revolution of the 80s and 90s delivered many new tools. The micro-manipulator allowed the detailed examination of single Reed-Sternberg cells for the first time. Throughout the last decades, the refinement of treatment and supportive care, as well as the combination of radio and chemotherapy, led to impressive results. We cured many patients deemed incurable just a generation ago. More recently, chemotherapy intensity was adapted with reduced doses in early stages and more intensive combinations in advanced stages. In 2012, Paul Ehrlich's dream became reality. By targeting the disease-defining CD30 antigen, the antibody drug conjugate Brentuximab Vedotin delivered a chemotherapeutic agent directly into the malignant cells. The first magic bullet in Hodgkin lymphoma was created. In the last few years, we observed the advent of checkpoint inhibition. Antibodies against the programmed death receptor reactivate the patient's immune system to effectively destroy malignant cells. This approach is about to bring yet another major breakthrough in our quest to cure most Hodgkin lymphoma patients without chemo or radiotherapy. Some will say that the story of Hodgkin lymphoma is a success story. Many lives have been saved and the progress has been unbelievable. We know that it is not only a success story, but also an exciting one. There are more secrets to be discovered and more magic bullets to be found. <laughs>